Hello and welcome to Algebra 2 Lesson 10. In this video, we're going to learn about interval notation. So starting on our next lesson, we're going to talk about linear inequalities in one variable. And most of you know from Algebra 1 that we have a method to display our solution for this type of problem, and it's known as interval notation. Interval notation allows us to notate a specific range of numbers on a number line. So before we kind of get into interval notation, let's just start out with a typical equation. I want to just show you a few things. So we have 2x plus 7 equals 21. So we know how to solve this at this point. So 2x plus 7 equals 21. So we would subtract 7 away from each side of the equation. I'll have 2x is equal to 14. Divide both sides by 2. And I'll get x is equal to 7. Now, normally this is fine. We just put x equals 7. That's a perfectly acceptable way to notate your solution. You could also use a solution set. So the set contains one element. The element is 7. Additionally, we could show the solution graphically. I have a number line here. I could just put a filled in circle at 7. So these are all ways I could show the solution for this equation. Then there's another one. We're going to talk about this more at the end of this lesson. There's something known as set builder notation. So I could say the set of all elements x such that x is equal to 7. And if this doesn't make sense now, that's okay. We're going to cover it at the very end of this lesson. But the point is just to show you that there are many different ways to notate the solution for this equation. And in every situation, it's basically telling us what? That x needs to be replaced with 7 for us to get a true statement. 2 times 7 would be 14, 14 plus 7 is 21. If I replace x with anything else, I will not get a true statement, right? The equation will be false. All right, so now let's look at an inequality. And it's nothing we have to solve. We're just looking at x is greater than 7. So what can I replace x with here? Well, it's no longer a single value. I can replace x with anything that's actually larger than 7. If I put 7 in itself, it won't work. 7 is not greater than 7, that's false. But anything larger than 7, anything to the right of 7 on the number line, would make it true. 8 is greater than 7, that's true. 12 is greater than 7, that's true. 1,000 is greater than 7, that's true. 1,216,427 is greater than 7, that's true. So if I replace x with any value that is larger than 7, I will get a true statement. So how do we notate this graphically? Well, on the number line, we would locate 7. And we want to mark 7 as a boundary point, or an area that will separate the solution part from the non-solution part. So we do this with two different things. We can either use a parenthesis, or we can use an open dot. So at 7... I can use an open dot like this, which a lot of students will see that in their class, or I can use a parenthesis that faces towards the solution region. Now, since x is greater than, the solution region is to the right of 7. So I would face my parenthesis to the right, and it would touch 7 like that. Now, once we have that, what we want to do is we want to shade the number line, again, to the right of 7, because that's what satisfies this inequality. So I would shade all of this, and I would shade my arrow to say, hey, this continues forever and ever and ever. And so any number that is larger than seven would satisfy this inequality. Now, in the situation where you have something known as a non-strict inequality, we use a different variation of this. We would use a bracket or a filled in dot so in this particular example, we have that x is greater than or equal to 5. Now because this or equal to, remember, x can be equal to 5 or x can be greater than 5 for this to be true. So now if I replace x with 5, 5 is greater than or equal to 5, that's true because this part is true. 5 is equal to 5. Or any number larger than 5 would also work. If I do 216 is greater than 5. That's true. So x can be anything that is, again, 5 or anything larger than 5. 
So at five, instead of putting a parenthesis or an open dot, I'm now going to put either a filled in circle or filled in dot like that, or I'm going to put a bracket there that faces towards the solution region. Again, this is a greater than or equal to, so the solution region is to the right. So I put a bracket here, and then just like I did in the last example, I'm going to shade the solution region. So I'm going to shade everything to the right. And I'm going to shade that arrow to say, hey, this continues forever and ever and ever. All right, let's try a few examples here. So if I saw something like x is less than 3, well, I'd find 3. And at 3, I can either put, again, I can put a, an open dot or an open circle. Got to make sure that there's no color inside of it to indicate that 3 is not part of the solution because this is a strict inequality. This is strict. X there cannot be 3. If I put this here and it's X is less than or equal to 3, well, then this would be filled in because now X can be equal to 3. But that's not what we have here. So I'm going to put in an open circle or open dot, however you want to think about that. Or more typically, what I use is a parenthesis that faces in the direction of the solution region. Here it's a less than. So the solution region is going to the left. So my parenthesis would face to the left. And I would just shade everything to the left because all the values to the left of 3 would satisfy this inequality. X is less than 3. So if I put 2 in there, 2 is less than 3, that's true. If I put 0 in, 0 is less than 3, that's true. If I put negative 7 in, negative 7 is less than 3, that's true. So anything to the left of 3 would work as a solution. Okay. What about x is less than or equal to negative 4? So we want to find negative 4. So that's right here. And if it's less than or equal to, I've got to include negative 4 as part of my solution. So again, I can put a filled in circle like this, or I can use a bracket. Now the bracket faces to the left because it's a less than or equal to. So put my bracket in there. And then I shade everything to the left. What about x is greater than 2? Well, I'm going to find 2. And again, this is a strict inequality. So 2 is not included. I'm going to put a parenthesis that faces to the right or an open circle. So I can do this or I can do this. And again, it's just a matter of what your textbook or your teacher tells you to do. They both mean the same thing. So let's, let's go with this one for now. So x is greater than 2. So anything to the right of 2. So I'm going to shade all this like that. And again, it's the same thing if I erase this and I do this. A parenthesis that faces in the direction of the solution region. We have a greater than, so the solution region is to the right. All right, so now that we understand how to graph an interval in a number line, let's talk about interval notation. So as I alluded to earlier, interval notation is a way to display an interval on a number line. Now, there's some important things that you need to know here. The first thing is that we use parenthesis, so you have this parenthesis here that's on the left or this parenthesis here on the right to exclude a number from the interval. So what exactly does that mean? Well, if I saw something like a parenthesis here and then a value A, what it's telling me is that it's anything larger than A. A is basically not included. So for example, if I had x is greater than 2, my interval would start with a 2 right here because it's saying anything larger than a 2. Can't be 2 itself, but anything larger than 2. Then you have a comma, and let's say I put b there. Well, this is anything smaller than b. So in the case of x is greater than 2, well, for this part right here, x can continue after 2 forever and ever and ever, so you use an infinity there. Now, with an infinity, because you can't ever touch it, you always use a parenthesis. But let's say we had something that was a little bit different. Let's say that we had that x was greater than 2 and x was less than, let's say, 5. Well, in this case, I want anything smaller than 5 
and I also want anything larger than two. So on a number line, that would be the range of values between two and five. So I have a number line here. If I wanted to notate x is greater than two and less than five, I would find two on the number line, which is here. And again, we just saw this, so I'd put a parenthesis that's facing to the right. Because I'm just thinking about x is greater than two for right now. So x is greater than two. And then now I want to think about x is less than five. X is less than five. So I'm going to put a parenthesis at five facing to the left. And I would shade all the values in between because the values in between are what's going to satisfy this, what we call three-part inequality. If I have a number that's in between two and five, it works. If I, if I choose three, three is greater than two and also it's less than five. If I choose four. Four is greater than two, and also it's less than five. If I choose something like six that's outside of this range, six is greater than two, but it's not less than five. It's got to satisfy both conditions. So again, this is how you would notate something like that. So let's look at something like x is greater than negative three. So graphically, we know that we find negative three. It's greater than, so our parenthesis would face to the right, and then I would shade everything to the right here including this arrow. Now in interval notation, again, it's a strict one. So I know that negative three is not included. So I have my parenthesis here, I put a negative three. So I'm saying anything or any value larger than negative three. This is your cutoff point or your boundary that you're putting in there to say, hey, it's any value larger than this. If I use this exactly, it's not gonna work but anything larger would. Then comma, this solution continues forever and ever and ever. So the end point over here, we'd put infinity. And we always use a parenthesis with infinity. So I wouldn't say any value less than infinity because that's, that's not ever gonna work. But typically when you have something on this side, we're saying any value that's less than that. So as another example, let's say I saw, let's just erase this real quick. Let's say I saw that x was greater than negative three and less than, let's say seven. Well, in this particular case, in interval notation, I'd have a negative three next to a parenthesis here, comma, I'd have a seven next to a parenthesis here. Any value that's larger than this works up to, but not including this value, because it's any value that's smaller than this that works. So it's gotta be between the two values. So if I look at this graphically, at negative three, I have a parenthesis here. At seven, I have a parenthesis here. And I shade everything in between. What about something like x is less than seven? Well, again, graphically we know, we put a parenthesis that faces to the left at seven, and we shade everything to the left. Pretty simple. And then an interval notation, I'll have a seven here. And again, all this is saying is that it's any value less than seven. Seven is not included because we have the parenthesis next to it. Now, in terms of going this way, that solution continues forever and ever and ever. It could be anything less than seven. So it could be negative, whatever, however big a number you wanna think of, let's say negative one million, for example, or negative 10 trillion, whatever you wanna think of. So we use negative infinity in this particular case. Anytime I use infinity or negative infinity, I always use a parenthesis next to it. Again, because you can't ever touch it. Infinity is a concept, it's not really a number. All right, so in the case that we want to include a number, we use a bracket, just like we did when we were graphing. So something like this means a or larger. So if I had a comma and then infinity, that would be, let's say I had three with a bracket next to it, comma infinity. This would translate to x is greater than or equal to three. X could be three or anything larger. Or let's say for example, I had a bracket here and I had seven comma, and let's say we do nine in another bracket. This is telling me that x is greater than or equal to seven and less than or equal to nine. 
So it can be 7, it can be 9, it can be anything between also. But if you get outside of those ranges, if you go less than 7 or greater than 9, you would not have a true statement. So when we want to, again, include a number, we use a bracket. So on this part right here, let me kind of erase this. On the right side, let's say I have B here, for example. This is B or smaller. So let me put a negative infinity here. So this could be, for example, X is less than or equal to, let's say, 10. Well, in this case, it'd be negative infinity here. And then up to and including 10, use my bracket. All right, so let's say as an example, we had X is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 9. So we know that x, again, is greater than or equal to 2. So let's find 2. And this number line is a little different because I fit more numbers on it. But here's 2 right here. And what I'm going to do is I want to put a bracket that faces to the right. I'm going to put a bracket that faces to the right. Now, x is also satisfying the condition that it has to be less than or equal to 9. So we're going to find 9, which is right here. Put a bracket that faces to the left. And I would shade everything in between there. So x can be 2. If I plug a 2 in there, it's OK. 2 is equal to 2, and it's also less than 9. So that works. It could be 9, same thing. But it can't be anything outside of this range. If I plug in a negative 3, for example, negative 3 is not greater than 2, so that would fail. right? It's got to satisfy both conditions. Now, in interval notation, I'm just kind of following this right here graphically. I know that the smallest possible value that this thing can take on is 2. So I put a 2 there to the left, and I have a bracket next to it. Then comma. The largest value this thing can take on is a 9. 9 is included, so I put a bracket there. So this is the smallest value, and this is the largest. And the only difference between the two is let's say I, for example, had x is greater than 2 and also it's less than 9. What I do in this scenario is I'm, I'm basically doing the same thing. I just have parentheses instead. So I would have a parenthesis there, 2, comma, 9, and then a parenthesis there. In this case, I'm saying it's anything larger than 2. So to say, hey, it's not 2, but just anything larger than that. Then for 9, it's not the largest value because it's not included, but it's just anything less than that. So it's between the numbers 2 and 9. So it's just paying attention to whether you have a non-strict inequality like here or a strict inequality like here. What about something like x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 10? Well, again, graphically, pretty simple. I find negative 1. I put my bracket facing to the right. I find 10. I put my bracket facing to the left, and I shade everything between. In interval notation, I just basically follow this. Right? I'd have a negative 1 as the smallest value, comma, a 10 as the largest value, and I've got brackets next to each. And of course, we can have combinations of the two. Here, x is strictly greater than 3 and less than or equal to 5. So at 3, I'd have a parenthesis that's going to face to the right, because it's a greater than. x is greater than 3. And then at 5, I'm going to have a bracket, because it's a less than or equal to 5, so it faces to the left. And I'm going to shade everything in between here. And then in interval notation, I just follow this. At the left side, I'm going to have a parenthesis to say that 3 is not included. Then comma. On the right side, I'm going to have a 5. And I'm going to have a bracket to say 5 is included. All right, for this one, we have that x is greater than or equal to 7 and less than 14. So if I find 7, I'd want to put a bracket there facing to the right. Find 14, I'd want to put a parenthesis facing to the left. And I would shade everything in between. In an interval notation, I'm going to have a bracket and then a 7. Again, 7 is included, and then anything larger, up to, but not including, 14. 14 is going to have a parenthesis next to it to say that's not included. What about x is greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 12? 
So here's negative two. I would have a bracket that faces to the right. And then here's 12, I'd have a parenthesis that faces to the left. And I would just shade everything in between. And again, an interval notation, I'm gonna have a bracket that faces to the right, then negative two, because negative two is included, comma, and then I'd have a 12, and then 12 is not included. X is strictly less than 12, so I'd have a parenthesis there to indicate that 12 is not part of the solution. All right, so lastly, I briefly mentioned something known as set builder notation. This is something we will use in math, and I didn't really cover it when we talked about sets, so this is a good point where we can kind of drop it in. So set builder notation, we basically have a variable that's used as a placeholder. This is just saying that it's some real number, right? And to represent some real number, we just use X or Y or Z. So we say the set of all elements X, the set of all, and this is usually abbreviated by saying the set of all X, such that, this bar means such that, X has a certain property, okay? So in the example where I have an equation where X is equal to seven, I can notate this by saying the set of all real numbers represented with a variable X such that X is equal to seven, okay? Very, very easy. So if I was asked to put something like X is greater than negative four in set builder notation, I would say the set of all elements X such that, and then I would just list the property x is greater than negative 4. As a final one, let's say we have x is greater than negative 2 and less than or equal to 5. I could say the set of all elements x such that, and then just list the condition. x is greater than negative 2 and less than or equal to 5. Very, very simple.